Um, now that we've arrived on location, let's get this uh, let's get this truck off. <clears throat> As always, it's just a reverse of what we did. But again, on these, I don't want to take my rear straps off till I get pressure on the front J chain. So nothing's keeping them in there except for the pressure of the truck. So we're going to roll this back again till we get to the red arrow, or about two feet back. If it's not doesn't have the red arrow, the Jordans have a red arrow. The Centuries have marks. And get it back to there. And now we'll tilt it again. We're going to tilt it far enough that we can still get under the back easily and take our ratchet straps off. <clears throat> and again, just to review, when you bring these up and over, this one's going to be a little bit of a tough one because it's under this shock. I should have not know much to go about it. But again, as long as you take it past the center and push it, it freewheels on you. Get this off here. Okay, there's that one. Let's get the other one over here. Boy, this one here is gonna be this one's right on this shock. This will be a tough one to get off. Gotta twist it as we go past it. Let's see if we can't do this another way. Okay, so what I'm doing is doing a manual unload. So what I'm doing is, because this is really my way, it's kind of nice that this has happened, is that the, when it goes forward, this lock mechanism on the bottom is what catches and locks it. When you go forward, it comes up on a cam and pushes it out so it releases. Well, this shock mount's really giving me fits. So it, again, I love, I love real world, I don't like perfect. So what we're doing is we're taking and putting a little pressure on there and taking our finger and pulling this lock down and letting it go down just one lock at a time. That way we're releasing it where we can't quite pull this thing all the way off. So we're gonna pull this and pull them both up at the same time and pull some slack out. It's a little bit harder to do, don't get me wrong, than flipping it up and over. But now that we've got it loose, now we can flip it up and over and hit the locks we're a freewheel on us. So again, I really like having problems on demos. That's why I don't like particularly practicing stuff a lot to give you a perfect video because that's just not real world. Um, and what I hope you end up with is some skill sets that give you that no matter how good you're trained or who's trained you or what training you've gone through, that's what I love about towing is it's never always the same. It's always a challenge. There's some other wrinkle. Some guys put a car in a ditch and you're like, how did you do that? And you've always faced with challenges. Your job as a operator is just to take the common sense knowledge that you've gained and apply it as best as you can to the best of your ability. And the next time you get back to the shop, you discuss what you ran through and say, look, is there a better way? Or even call while you're on scene, is there a better way? At the shop here, we take lots of pictures and send them back and forth. The driver can send me pictures and I can tell him what to do based on the training I've given him, give, him a, give you another idea and get past whatever hiccup that you're running onto. So that is how, in my opinion, you get further along if you're just learning, is pictures and not being afraid to ask. Hopefully, you're working with a company that gives you a lot of extra resources and time and isn't afraid that once you're out on your own you're not done training you've just begun your training been doing this 28 years i still learn stuff every single day i still learn how to improve what i'm doing every day i don't have all the answers all this is for is to give you a baseline teaches you a four-point tie-down system so that you are taught in what I consider a good manner, a good baseline to learn from. Um, many other companies and many other people can show you a lot of things, but always remember you want a four point tie down every time without exception. If you don't get anything out of that, make certain you adhere to that. 
So let me get this other strap off and we'll get this on the ground a little more. <clears throat> and I think I said a little more and what I really meant to say was get this thing back on the ground. <clears throat> Lay this stuff up here. And again, I won't take the front ones off until, again, I consider this a heavy vehicle. I've waited till the ICC touched the ground. That tells me that's about where we're gonna hit when we roll it back. And uh, we'll get this thing on the ground. And you know, everybody always likes to idle them up and thinks it makes you go faster. I'm not gonna say it doesn't speed things up a little bit, but if you keep it slow, you can hear things around you. You can hear for all kinds of things. If something's going wrong when the engine's running real high, you can't always hear. So even though it's not idling up as much as maybe it could, now we'll plant that on the ground just a little bit. That means pick up the front end and tilt it a little more. Now we're gonna take these chains off one at a time. We're gonna winch in on the winch where we can undo our chains. All you do is push them back and they fall off. Go around the other side. Right now we're safe going behind it because we have a safety on I don't think I really made that point in the other videos. That's the reason you always see me. As soon as I get it up there with the winch, I want a safety on it. So that, and a safety is a single strap. That way if the winch fails and you walk behind it or a customer walks behind it, You've, you've at least taken one step to make certain that the vehicle's not secure because when I teach you, we typically do that side and then we roll forward and we just come around. So we end up with all four on there, but at least one on there, if done correctly, would hold it in place if, if the winch were to have a catastrophic failure and a car go rolling off. And everybody's like, well, that'll never happen. Um, I think to date I'm up to five that that's happened on. So it does happen. It's usually from disengaging the winch, in my opinion. And <clears throat> we talked about that in the first video that I don't like disengaging the winch. And one of the reasons is, is because when you go to re-engage, not everyone pays attention to making certain it goes completely back in. That's a cog set up in there. And it's got to fall completely back into, into place. And if you're not paying attention to that every single time, it catches on the outside edges and you'll be winching it up and all of a sudden it'll free spool and go backwards on you and go rolling down the hill. Again, I've had this stuff happen. That's the reason I teach you not to disengage the winch unless you absolutely have to. And if you do, you want to make certain that it's engaged and disengaged fully. So if I'm telling you to do something a certain way, it's because I've got real world experience of usually paying for it out of my pocket where something has failed. Uh, and that's why I'm telling you what it is. Until I find out a better method or a better way to reduce my liabilities or make guys safer on the side of the road, that's what I'm after. <clears throat> go around here and get this thing in park. <clears throat> and again, I like, I like leather gloves because I can easily pull them off. That's just a preference. They, they've got all these real tight fitting gloves today, but 
when you reach in somebody's car, we're gonna have to loosen this wire rope up again. When you reach in somebody's car, it's pretty hard for you to slam them, pull them things off. With a loose fitting leather glove, it comes on and off pretty easy. And of course, this thing doesn't want to come off particularly easy. Or I'm just not holding my mouth right. There she goes. Go around the other side. If you get yourself in the habit of only doing one direction at a time, you get yourself in the habit of that whether you're loaded or empty, you roll the bed forward first and then you tilt it. So many guys do a tilt and a fold forward together at the same time. I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with that, but when you're loaded it makes it much harder on the truck and the chassis of the truck than if you followed procedure and rolled it forward and then tilted it. It just makes it easier. I'm going to go out on this winch just a little bit so we can stage our... Again, it's all about getting ready for the next tow. So again, I like keeping them to the driver's side. I do not... Again, just to get through banging these chains around, I'll talk a little more. Again, I don't like putting them in a the T-hooks because it wears these things out. And again, it puts it so far out there in the middle that you can't reach it. When it's over here on the side, you know, you're not, you know, the guys at freewheel are, are typically putting it in the middle because they can't reach the middle, so they got to freewheel it. This way, my wire rope stays nice throughout the day and it's not getting all bound up and nothing is worse than a bound up wire rope that you're trying to get out on a police wreck it's all bound up from doing that freewheeling all the time because it free spools on there. So my, my ideas are about operating and making certain we're doing things as efficiently as we can. And put these, uh, put at least the ratchet straps back on here. Get them put back up. There you go. Can I get it? And again, I try to keep my ratchet straps and everything as neat as I can so that the next time that I'm ready to go, because I am nice and clean, and when I get there, I don't know if it's going to be a police call or what kind of call it is. And again, I, I compare us to the fire service. So to the fire departments and that, you wouldn't want them coming out to your house, being on fire, not having all their stuff put together. You'd probably uh, really pick on them if, if you ever saw that and they weren't prepared to fight your house fire or something like that. And I think that applies a lot to us. We really need to raise the bar as an industry and really ask ourselves to be better prepared and uh, acting like that we are pro the professionals that we're destined to be. Um, and I think the more prepared you are, so training and retraining, even practicing in the back lot of wherever you're working at, um, taking your own personal car or, or a company vehicle and loading it and, lo and unloading it, going through and taking the time to every day cleaning your boxes up and making certain that they're neat and organized so that when you do show up on a scene, no matter what it is, you've got all your equipment with you and you're ready to do your job for the day. Um, you should never go out with all the equipment that you're supposed to have on it. Now grant you, I can tell you that there's all kinds of more equipment than what I've shown you to carry on a, on a rollback. 
or any 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 wrecker or anything for that matter. We're gonna go around the front of the truck this time. But again, it's it's about making certain that all the tools in your toolbox. And when I say toolbox, I'm referencing the toolboxes on the truck, but also the toolbox in your head, making certain you've watched all the videos that you can get your hands on, you've gone to training, or you take additional training beyond what you're seeing here. And again, my videos are designed for the guy that's thinking about going into the towing industry and wants to get a leg up or possibly some training videos on somebody that's a new hire so you get a standardized practice. Hey, look, this is how we want it done here. It's a four point tie down every time. You can't do that without exception or go home. So with that, that kind of concludes all of our basic towing. And again, there's all kinds of different tie down techniques that you can use. You can use a variation of everything that I've shown you in many different ways. But uh, I think it gives you a good baseline to start off with. We're gonna get off here for now and I'll see about making you uh, some more videos.